Here in the New Zealand countryside, 25,000 sheep are sheared in just 10 days. It is a nightmare trying to keep the sheep still. Just got kicked in the face. But a good shearer can shear a sheep in a minute and the sheep won't even rig it, it'll just sit there. This wool normally would be cleaned, dyed, woven and sold across the globe as rugs and clothes. But due to a growing dependence on synthetic fabrics and a trade war with China, the value of wool has plummeted. All of a sudden, a key revenue to their business has just disappeared overnight. And not only is the revenue gone, it's actually turned into a cost. And it's left farmers like Andrew and Meredith with bales and bales of wool they can't sell. Now farmers are basically giving it away or throwing it away. So what happened? Back in the 1950s, wool was basically like gold in New Zealand. Farmers would produce one clip of wool and be able to pay off a whole piece of land, like buy a farm outright. It was the golden era for farmers in New Zealand. That's when Andrew's grandparents bought Ruanoi Station here in Taihapi, New Zealand. I'm third generation. It's great to carry on what dad and granddad have slaved away at doing. Andrew was working for his dad when the industry hit its peak in 1988 with wool exports valuing $1.9 billion. That made wool New Zealand's second biggest export after meat. Andrew took over the farm about 15 years ago, and since, he's grown it to about 7,600 acres, raising 25,000 sheep. Not a bad office when you get a view like this. It's blooming awesome, so quiet, especially this time of the day. It's beautiful. Andrew raises Romney sheep. Their coarse wool has to be sheared twice a year, for the sheep to stay healthy. Without taking the wool off, they do get dags and sort of dirty bottoms and stuff like that, and that can attract flies. And if they attract flies, flies can actually land on them and lay their eggs. That will actually kill a sheep. Also, think about how hot a New Zealand summer is. In 90 degrees Fahrenheit, that wool... It's like wearing a great big furry jacket in the middle of the summer. If they're really, really woolly, when they lie down, they get stuck on their back and they actually can't stand up again and they die. Seriously. In January, Andrew staff heads out to round up sheep for the first shearing of the year. Basically all the mustering is done on horseback, horse and dogs. Using 20 horses, four ATVs and eight dogs, they gather up 3,600 sheep at a time. They all have a couple of heading dogs and some hunaways. So the heading dogs are used for just heading the sheep and getting them going in the right direction. And the hunaways are the ones that bark and move the stock along. So it's all done on whistle command. They'll have a different whistle for left and right and stop and go. Got them heading the right way. They'll start coming, coming around and joining up with the other lot. They're all rounded up into this shed. Last lot bought in from mustering. They'll be drafted into their different lines. The sheep are separated into groups, lambs or babies, and adult ewes, or female sheep. We've got the ewes wool here, 36 micron. It's a lot coarser and harder. So it's best used for flooring, like carpets and rugs. And then lambs wool, which is 29 micron. It's a lot softer, finer. So it's better for blankets and clothes. The sheep are each weighed and lined up for shearing. Andrew hired a gang of eight contract shearers for the job. We're under the shearing shed right now, which is pretty hot, noisy and dusty, and we're shearing about 2,000 sheep today. The gang brings its own tools. What you've got here is pretty much the same as what your barbers will have. We call this a cutter at the top and the comb at the bottom, which we put on every time. It's just scissor action that goes across. One by one, Travis will pull a lamb out. So you'll start off with the belly. It's the easiest way to get that out of the way. And then it's just a rhythm that you kind of want to do to get around the sheep. And it's a pattern. But you're basically just taking off as much wool as you can. That cutter will last only about 15 minutes before it gets dull. Sharpen the gear so you can get a clean, clean cut on the sheep. But don't worry, this doesn't hurt the sheep. It is actually just a haircut for the sheep. So you try and do every sheep the same. It makes it easy on your body as well. It makes the sheep comfortable. I'm making sure that they're in the best state when they go out, minimising nicks and controlling them properly. It's a tough job. Shearing gangs work long hours in the heat, wrestling with livestock. Oh, you're right? Did you get a kick in the nose? It is a nightmare. Trying to keep the sheep still, they kick and wriggle and stuff like that. A good shearer could shear a sheep in like one minute, and to watch them do it is amazing. They are so fast. The more you do it, the more experienced you are, but at the start, it's never easy. It takes a big toll on your body and mind. These guys are so good at taming sheep, they can shear over 300 in a day. Rouseys gather up the fleece, and pressers squish it into huge bales. 200 kilos a bale. In 2015, Andrew would have sold the stock quickly 
for $7 a kilo. But today... I was just talking to the wool broker last night. He sort of came back with this dollar twenty. I'm thinking, oh God, this is not, this is not great. When you add in the increasing costs of shearer contracts, it's now more expensive to shear the sheep than the wool is actually worth. My farm, five years ago, we might have been making net cost fifty or sixty thousand dollars revenue. So it's gone from making fifty to costing thirty. So it's an eighty thousand dollar a year change. It's soul destroying to see the wool prices so low when it's the most amazing natural product. So why is the wool worth so little? Well, demand is way down, because a few decades ago, cheaper synthetic fabrics began replacing coarse wool in flooring products. Wool is biodegradable, sustainable, and fire-resistant, but it's expensive. To be honest, the average person can't afford 100% wool carpets. Synthetic rugs are made of plastic fiber, so they're harmful for the environment and are highly flammable, but they're a third of the price. And their growing popularity took a huge swing at wool's demand. Then things got rocky with New Zealand's biggest customer. 60% of New Zealand's wool goes to China. Andrew and Meredith sold all of their lamb's wool to clothing factories there. We do have a hell of a lot of our eggs in the Chinese basket. That proved to be a bad bet for New Zealand. They come in and they buy and they buy and they stop. So our wool prices dive. In 2016, China first pulled back its demand for coarse wool and the price tumbled. In 2019, the Trump administration slapped China with fresh tariffs on textiles sold in the U.S. Struggling to sell its manufactured wool clothes in the U.S., China slowed its orders for New Zealand wool. That can cause all sorts of problems in supply chains and markets because all of a sudden you've got your major customer not wanting it. Then in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic closed down clothing factories in China. Andrew and Meredith were stuck with bales of wool. So like many farmers in New Zealand, they stockpiled it waiting for prices to go back up. But it can only be kept for about a year before it starts to deteriorate. But a year into this pandemic, and prices still haven't rebounded. Stockpiling didn't work. Some farmers were forced to throw away part of their wool stock. Others had to get creative. Meredith found Tracy. Tracy takes the lamb's wool Meredith couldn't sell and converts it into throw blankets. These are the throws that we're manufacturing for her. To try and give them some added value to their fibre by getting it processed into yarn and then processing it into throws, which then they can sell for a high margin. Workers in Wellington clean and dye the wool and then send it to Tracy. When the wool arrives, we then warp it, we then weave it. You'd probably need to allocate a kilo per throw. Workers inspect and mend each throw by hand. The blankets are then cleaned, raised, meaning fluffed up, and then packaged. Even though there's growing interest for these throws online, it's barely made a dent in Andrew and Meredith's losses. Tracy only buys their lamb's wool, but the majority of Andrew and Meredith's output is coarse wool, which is still caught up in trade wars. To weather the storm, some farmers are turning to breeds that shed their own wool to avoid those rising shearing costs. Others are pivoting to meat production or selling their farms to forestry and getting out of sheep farming altogether. It would be a huge economic negative for our country if we saw the wool industry disappear. What's left is a once booming wool industry on the brink. We've seen that sheep flock go from 70 million to today we're about 20, 22 million. We're the last wool weaver in New Zealand. There used to be a scouring plant almost in every town. Farmers are hoping to expand exports outside of volatile China and convince consumers of the benefits of wool over synthetic. A lot of consumers are now really starting to think about what's in the products they're buying and prepared to pay more for natural, environmentally friendly products. And Tom says the industry needs to diversify. You're not just dependent on a floor. You can put wool through the whole house. You can put wool through the whole office as well. Wool can be used in sofas, beds, drapes, upholstery, and even insulation. Well, we're pretty nervous, really, to be honest, yeah. And I think if we had a crystal ball, that would be fantastic. But nobody knows where things are headed. For now, Andrew and Meredith aren't abandoning the industry just yet. At the end of the day, you've still got to share the wool off them and that might as well be worth something. So we'll hang in there and see whether we can... uh, Ride the roller coaster. So how many have you named? (laughs) No, they're not not pets. (laughs) Haven't named any of them.